black or red, so lava, hadite is the sedimentary rock, the gray stuff. Sometimes you'll see a bit terracotta color too. Okay, the bark, and then bark. It's in the mix. Yeah, I didn't bring bags of just bark. So yeah, I didn't. Um, and the fourth is is the the most debated part, the clay element. So I have a condoma, right? And I'm not a fan of it. I find that in our weather, it breaks down too fast for my liking, and the fines go to the bottom. <coughs> in fact, the Japanese string out the fines from the kadama, and they sell it separately, and they sell it for one use. When you've got uh, a slate, right, and you're gonna do a forest or something, or pinging on it, you drill up the holes for your drainage and for your wires to go in, and then you need to build some kind of a dam around the outside while you're creating the forest because all the loose bonsai soil would just wash off when it rains or when you water the tree vigorously. So you need something to keep it together until such time as the roots start to grow into each other a bit, okay? In Japan, they use the garbage, the dust of the akadama to make clay walls. That's how much that stuff compacts. When it gets wet, it's like, it's like this kind of clay when it's wet, like modeling clay. And they use it for that purpose. That's why I can't decide why it's such a wonderful element. But you do need something basic to add to the mix. When I was a kid, I used to use kitty. <laughs> kitty litter is a terrible thing to use because they plan, they make it to break down fast. Of course, it's for one use for one day or two days and to landfill it goes, right? So it has the right consistency. You could sieve it out and get the right size granules that you want. Bad stuff though, very bad stuff. So don't ever use kitty litter. <laughs> But there is something a step up from that. If you go to say Napa Auto Parts or to one of those kind of stores, they have a higher temperature baked clay crushed up that they get in bags. So you could get it in a 10, 20 pound bag, probably 10, 15 bucks. <coughs> it's baked at a higher temperature by far than kitty litter. It's, and though it's meant to be disposed of, it doesn't break down nearly as fast. So in a pinch, you could mix that in as your fourth element to your soil, okay? It brings the acid level down, okay? It's alkaline, it helps to balance it out. And it's something nice and gritty. It also, it fills the need for something smaller, right? When you look at the parts of these, these are just shy of a quarter inch. It's a fairly large stone, right? Yeah. Uh, the black is about one eighth. And this is about a quarter of the hay dye. So you kind of need something, small stuff to kind of filter down in to, to fill in the spaces in between. I really think there is a need for some kind of clay product, but I honestly can't say that I, I know what that is. I bring in Akadama because people like it. And I say, if you want it, I will absolutely sell it to you, but I do not use it. I use it, I use about four of those bags a year. That's it for a collection of 4,000 trees. I'm just not a fan. But if you talk to Bjorn, Bjorn, he'll tell you it needs to be in everything. Right? Like he is Bjorn. He is a, a handsome young musician. So the fact that it's in your mix outside all winter long, it doesn't break down. But if the stuff is, is uh, not cooked as, as hot, then <coughs> I find in our winters it breaks down quite a bit. So I, I'm stuck on that fourth no, no, element. I'm bad. stuck on oh, it. Oh, that's why some people started saying a few years ago, don't ever use turpus anymore, because they were seeing that chips and dust in the bottom, yeah. and it can kill a tree. And it, it's tricky because it's hidden mm. in the bottom of your pot. Your tree looks healthy and beautiful oh, all summer long, but it, all the small, small sediment as you wash it and as it rains starts to go through the bigger rock. It starts to make its way down, and it settles in the bottom. If it blocks up this, then you've got a problem. So you've got to make sure all four of your parts are, are not going to contribute to that issue. Because you're not in the habit of like checking to see, right? You almost need to remove the tree and see how things are going. Years ago, I was finding there was a lot of sediment in the bottom of my, and I was using about 20% condom. So I am still trying to figure out what to use, but it's tricky. Some layer like a lasagna. That's a yeah. little bit.
impractical and unrealistic. Okay. Case in point, think about your seven layer lasagna. What are your chances of getting seven layers in there? No zero, zero, right? So I don't think it's absolutely necessary to, to give strata like that, layers either, but I'm a big fan of you just made sure you had lots of drainage, you just made sure you have a mesh that, that lets the water out, but not big enough holes to let out your sediment, to let out your, all your stone. So it makes sense to put something that drains really well local. So I put a handful of lava over each of the drainage holes so that nothing else can get in there and start to block up the mesh. Right? Well, that's a good point. Right? But I don't put an inch of lava in the bottom all by itself. I just put some just on and the then get going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you do want something underneath of your root base. You don't take, you don't brush your tree right out and drop it right down onto there because it needs something to grow into. It needs something to cushion it from the temperature that your pot can get in the heat of the sun. They get very warm. So you, you're insulated a bit too. But those roots on the bottom, they're the most active. So they need, they need something to grow into. Okay, please. Yep, sure. That's what I do with it. When I put a tree into a pot, you don't need to do this. This is just a habit of my own. What I put in the meshes, I either use the, the wiring holes for a guy wire in there, <laughs> or I'll run a thin wire, say one and a half or two mil, through the drainage holes, and I torque the tree, the root ball, down and in. That's just because I'm nervous about cats, dogs, breezes, skunks, raccoons, all the things that are kind of out there in our yards, and if you've got a tree that's precious to you and it gets knocked over, is it gonna come out and spill out? And then when you get home from work on July 5th, the hottest day of the year. Is there a trauma? Are you going to start crying now? Or? <laughs> so to just to avoid that kind of dilemma, I just take a fine wire when I'm first potting that tree and I, I, I thread it through the thickest part of the root ball that I can, pull it through and I tighten it down in and trim it off. And I just tuck the little tail, push it down with my thumb. Once that tree's been in that pot for several months, its roots have really been active and are starting to work. All you need to do when you don't think you need that wire anymore is snip it on the bottom, find your knot, and it pulls straight out. You don't need to disturb the tree or repot it or anything. I don't, I don't tend to trim mine and take them back out. I usually leave them for the duration. Um, when you guys come to visit, you'll see I've got, well, I've got over 4,000 trees, so I've got just Tables and tables and tables and shelves and shelves of them. Some of them higher up too, so I worry about the <laughs> possibility of them toppling and falling. That's why I wire mine in. Yeah, but when do you change the soil? When do I change the soil? Every year I check. Outdoor trees, I find almost every year I need to change some. So here's the question that you ask yourself when you're looking at your tree at this time of year for outdoor trees. Uh, remember, I'm taking mine out of berms, so they're out of the pot already. Already. Right? Easy. Because I don't keep them, if I had them all in these micropods, right, like I do for my pines, I wouldn't need to disturb them, right, every single year. Right. But I get to see the roots of all of my conifers and deciduous every year when I'm pulling them back out of the berm. I have to decide, is it time for a slightly bigger pot? And whether I like it or not, although a lot of them come out looking a bit like ice cubes, because during the previous year of growth, they kind of grew to the shape of the pot they were in. Yes. If your soil is pretty good and loose and free draining, you lose a lot of it. So when I'm pulling them out of the berms, they don't keep their shape. So I'm forced to add supplement all the time. Is it absolutely necessary to change it? I don't feel that it is every single year. But it depends on the kinds of trees that you're growing, right? Ficus trees are extremely aggressive, fast-growing indoor trees, mm -hmm. right? So, and it depends on your feeding regimen. Are you looking for your bonsai trees to get what they need mostly from the soil with just a few supplements? Or are you giving them a regular diet right, of, of uh, a supplement, right? 
Are you putting some crystals on or are you pouring a liquid into them every six weeks or some people even more often? It depends, right? It depends. So there, I know that sucks. I know it'd be nice to have just write it on the calendar and say you have to do this on this date, but it's not quite that crystal clear. But I think we need to do like multiple. Yeah, <laughs> I've tried. I do a lot of talking. But yeah. I don't always get the answers. That I'm like, are you going to wash the roots bare? Not too often does it do that, but I mean, I've seen it done, I have done it. Is that what, is that the extent you're gonna go to? Or are you just upping it to a pot that's one or two inches bigger because it looks like it's getting a bigger girth? There's vigorous uh, root growth. And so you're thinking a better up pot it. Some people are trying to keep their trees the same size though. They want the tree to be quite old, nice big trunk, but they don't want it to get too much taller. And this is the size they want it to stay. That's when you need to actually actively root prune, mm -hmm. right? And depending on the kind of trees that you're playing with, you might have to prune a lot, right? I find fruit trees, with the fruit trees that I'm working with, I don't have to disturb the roots or, or clip them too hard too often. I, I find that um, azaleas, rhododendrons, um, stewardia, camellia, that family of trees, that they they have a very fine meshy root that's almost like a fishing net so it's hard to get a fix on how well things are going with the root because it becomes one big cube right so those i just brush gently around the circumference and the bottom aggressively to loosen it up and then replace just the soil around that okay. all right sounds like it's good time for